This video is brought to you by Paperlite, the screen protector that makes drawing or writing on an iPad feel just like paper. Check out the link in the description to learn more. What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser and I'm now a third year medical student studying at King's College London. And every day, whether I'm at university taking down lecture notes or I'm on clinical placement in the hospital writing down interesting things that I see on ward rounds, I'm using my iPad to take notes every single day. It's absolutely changed my life as a student and has been the single most valuable investment that I've made. I'm a huge fan of students using digital or electronic note-taking methods and in this video I want to show you exactly why. If you are a student using the iPad Pro I'd love to hear from you in the comments about how you use it in your day-to-day -day and what it's helped improve in your life. So as a medical student I spend hundreds of hours sitting at my desk learning all kinds of different things about the human body and so as you can imagine I accumulate tons and tons of notes. Here are a couple of examples of what my notes look like. They tend to look something like this with pictures that I've taken from the lecture slide. Also have my subtitles here and then everything underneath is sort of the information relevant to that subtitle. I use all kinds of different colors and note-taking techniques to help me remember things. I actually have a whole video on that. You guys can check it out over here. But over time, before I switched to the iPad, I accumulated so many different papers. You know what? Let me just show you. These are all the notes that I wrote during my university years at the University of Toronto. So this is my first year of medical school. And then these are all the notes that I wrote when studying for the MCAT. Hundreds and hundreds of pages of handwritten notes. These three big ugh, and heavy folders, which you really can't take anywhere with you. The iPad can fit probably 20 times as much information as this, all in one tiny thin electronic device. As much as I am neat and organized and I do everything in a very specific way, it's still difficult to go back through these papers notes and find anything that I need. And that's another thing that the iPad is amazing for. You can literally just control F your whole iPad. You can find any word that you've written from any piece of notes anywhere. Let's say somewhere in these notes, I want to find where I talked about bronchoconstriction. So I can go here and I can search bronchoconstriction. And even though my handwriting is absolutely horrible, over here I found there, bronchoconstriction. Where am I going to find bronchoconstriction in all of these papers and handwritten notes? That part of using an iPad honestly cannot be understated for university students. Anyways, let's put this away. It's taking up too much space and it's heavy. It's so light, you barely even notice it when it's in your bag, and it literally carries 10 times the amount of information that I could put in physical space. All the pens and papers that I used to carry around with me has been simply replaced by this one Apple pencil. All the colors, thicknesses, highlighters, and pens that I could possibly want at my fingertips in just one second. It's just this one simple, extremely thin and light device. Another amazing feature about the iPad is that you can use it as a second screen with your MacBook. With the new iPad, iOS and macOS updates, they've made this very, very simple using an application called Sidecar. You just click this one button and it will immediately make your iPad a second screen. I honestly cannot overstate how valuable having a big screen has been for me. It improves my productivity and my efficiency so much. You can have the essay that you're writing open on one screen and then all of the internet research that you're doing on the other. Now I decided to go with the 12.9 inch version of the iPad Pro and that's because I wanted more screen real estate for when I'm multitasking, you know, having two different apps open at the same time, it's definitely valuable to have more screen real estate in order to write. So the amazing thing about the iPad is, for example, let's take my lectures on cardiovascular disease. Let's go to lecture 01. So this over here is the equivalent of one piece of paper. And especially if you hold this in portrait mode, you can see that this is the exact size of an A4 piece of paper, which made the transition for me from writing on paper to going fully digital in my life so much easier and it felt so much more natural. Something else that really helped with that natural transition was the paper-like screen protector. Besides actually protecting my screen from any scratches or fingerprints and things like that, it actually feels like you're writing on paper, which is just huge. And that's made my transition to digital note-taking just so much more smooth, feel so much more natural, and it's as if nothing has changed. I've just gained all of the upside that comes along with having an iPad. It feels familiar, it feels easy, and it eliminates that feeling of you writing on a slippery slab of glass. And that's honestly made my experience of taking notes on an iPad so much better. I'm really, really enjoying it. If you guys want to learn more about the Paperlite screen protector, you can check out the links in the description down below. If you're actually using an Apple Pencil and the iPad in order to take your notes as opposed to typing on a laptop, then you're actually using your brain every single time that you write down a word. I know that when I was in lectures at the University of Toronto with my old laptop, I would literally just sit there, almost be falling asleep and just typing away whatever it is that I was listening to, whatever the professor was saying. I did manage to get down all the material that the professor was saying, but the downside was I was basically learning 
absolutely nothing. Now that I actually have to write out anything that I think is important, I actually have to use my brain to convert whatever the professor is saying into a nice, concise, and easy thing for me to write down and something that I can actually remember. And another thing that I really appreciate about the iPad is that in the future, if you ever want to add in new information or you want to delete something that's old, it's just so, so, so simple. You can move things around, manipulate things, and just add in new info, which is something that I really hated not being able to do on my paper notes. If I ever had to add something or I forgot something and I now need to just squeeze it in, it was always such a big thing because I was ruining my very neat organization and having to move things around. So this is just a very big point for me. Now we can talk about the iPad without talking about the apps. So obviously not only do you get this device that's amazing for taking your notes, organizing everything in your life, but you also have the app store. Now, as a medical student, one of the apps that I use the most is C3D for anatomy, which is an anatomy app that allows you to see the human body in 3D. You can manipulate the body, zoom in, click on different bones, objects, and structures, and learn more about them. And it's just an incredibly useful app. On top of that, obviously, there's millions of other apps. I use Quizlet for my flashcards. I use Geeky Medics in order to prepare for my objectively structured clinical exams or OSCEs. You know, there's all kinds of apps that you can use in order to help you study, in order to improve your efficiency while studying. It's it's not just something that you use to write on and take notes. It has a lot of other benefits as well. Now, one of the biggest advantages of having an iPad is simply the organization and decluttering ability that it grants you. So for example, in this note-taking app called Notability, over here on the left, I have all kinds of different dividers and within them, all kinds of different subjects. As you can see, they're neatly organized by color. And let's open one of them, let's say Supporting Life. Within Supporting Life, I have all of these different subjects and each one of these is going to have its own set of lectures, case-based discussions, workshops, etc. And within each of those, you guys can see the notes that I've taken. Lecture two, plural diseases. We scroll down a bit more. Lecture three, hypersensitivity and asthma. And as you can see, for every single one of these lectures, there's just, look at how much information I can put here. And just the style, the organization and everything, it's just amazing. Another thing with the iPad is you literally have no papers ever. Any document or handout I'm given in my tutorials, I literally take a photo of, send to my iPad and import directly into Notability. That way I never lose papers, I never crumple papers, and it's literally all in this one little thin device. I mean, I can't say this enough. And then with travel, if you ever want to go on holiday or go home to visit your family, but you have to keep up with a bit of studying, you know, memorizing some flashcards or going over a couple of lectures, literally all you have to take with you is this. Before, when I used to travel home to see my family over the Christmas breaks, I would literally take two or three of these and revise from them. Even though I'm such an organized person and trust me, I keep everything filed very, very well, this is still much less organized than my iPad. And this is much more difficult to look through and find the information that I really want. So it's also just amazing for travel. Another amazing thing about the iPad is that I know that I will never, ever, ever lose my work. The note-taking app that I use Notability, which you can watch an entire video on over here, I have on my iPad, on my MacBook, and on my iPhone. All of my notes will forever be stored online. I will literally never ever lose them. And if I want to access my notes anywhere in the world on any device, I can simply do that through OneDrive. So not only are all of my notes in one little thin device, but I can literally take them with me anywhere that I want, and I can access them from anywhere that I want. Back in the University of Toronto, two weeks before my final exam in third year, I realized that I had lost one of these little paper bundles that I had made over the course of that year. And it was honestly so devastating. Those notes were gone forever and I had to literally relearn and restudy so much material because I couldn't go over it quickly using my notes. It was a horrible experience and to know that that will never ever happen with something like my iPad is just very, very reassuring. And the last thing that I wanna say is that the base model of these iPads, the 64 gigabyte Wi-Fi version, is honestly enough in my opinion. You don't need data everywhere you go. Wi-Fi is pretty much everywhere and you can almost always connect to it as a student. And then if you use your iPad mostly for studying, you know, you're not downloading Netflix movies or shows or anything like that, then 64 gigabytes is honestly probably going to be enough. And all right, guys, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you've gotten a better idea of how it is that I use my iPad at school and why it is such an important purchase for me and how it's helped me improve my life as a student. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it and leave me a comment down below as well, letting me know what you thought. Subscribe to see more content like this from me in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.